What's up and welcome to the Beat Report. I'm Edward Lewis, publisher of BruinsportReport.com. This is Miguel Melendez, beat writer for the LA Daily News and blogger for InsideSoCal.com slash UCLA. We're here at the Rose Bowl where UCLA just beat Houston 37-6. to Miguel, let's jump right into it. Instant analysis. What did you take from this game? Well, I thought it was interesting how UCLA set the tone from the very start. I mentioned this in my article uh, for tomorrow in the paper. 16 seconds is all they needed to really show for the defense to really show you know that they've accepted this challenge of going up against a team like Houston with a high powered offense uh, for Eric Hendricks to be heads up on that play and Jordan Zomo was part of that play too zeroing in on um, on their on that backwards pass and scooping it up um, I thought that was interesting that they got off to a strong start uh, and that, that's really what they needed and not just that but from the defense itself to show that they are capable of really dictating what kind of game they're going to have and I thought that was important because from that point on you saw that it was pretty much lights out from that point on and the interceptions and and, and Dato Jones playing well I thought that really set the tone and that's really what UCLA needed tonight yeah my, my take it's a little different than that. I mean I, they struggled a little bit in my opinion I know they put racked up 600 yards and whatnot it's, it, on offense um, and, and I to me it's big to have these growing pains and these struggles in a win like this, you know, in a, in a 30 point win, it, it's easy to have growing pains and, and it's easy to teach. Right. Uh, Morrow kind of mentioned that in the post game press conference that, you know, we, we like to have mistakes and big wins so we can tell our, our players what they need to work on and stuff and get better. So that's kind of the biggest thing I'll take away from this game is, is right. just, it's nice to, to struggle in, in a game where you win by so much. So right. I, I thought that was huge. Yeah, and that, that being said, I mean, it's nice that you can have those growing pains in games where you win. Um, you know, it's tough when you have blowouts because the, the, the dangers in having blowout wins is you tend to forget some of the things that can go wrong, the miscues that can, that can be overlooked because it's such a blowout win. Um, today they only won by, th only won, but they, they won uh, by 30 <laughs> points or so. And, you know, that they can have these growing pains with the win. That's not something we've seen before with UCLA, where in the past they've always taken it in the chin. And it was really a, a, a long growing pain for the Bruins. Individually, uh, you know, a lot of standouts tonight, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, Dayton Jones stands out and, and all those guys over there. Uh, who stood out kind of for good or bad reasons for you tonight? Well, I mean, I will start with the good. Uh, Sheldon Price, uh, three interceptions, uh, tied school record uh, that I believe Tevin McDonald also holds. Uh, Dayton Jones, you mentioned, uh, had three tackles for a loss today and, and played really well. I think the offensive line, I think, was the one downside where they struggled. They struggled providing consistent protection for Brett Hundley. They struggled opening lanes for Jonathan Franklin, who we mentioned only had 110 yards rushing. Uh, I think the offensive line has gotten a lot of the praise in the last couple of weeks. And then today we saw what they can do um, when they when they do struggle, and that tends to be something where you know Huntley's not getting protection, like we mentioned. The the, op the lanes aren't opening up for them. They struggled today, and we saw that. And you know it's interesting that it took three games for us to see that. But I think at some point we were going to see it. And tonight, fortunately, they got to they they had that against a team like Houston, and it's nice that they were able to come away with a win in spite of those inconsistencies. Yeah, my two, uh, I mean, first one, Marcus Rios, it's not a real standout either one way or the other. I just thought it was very interesting how he got in. Later we found out Ishmael Adams is going to need season-ending shoulder surgery, which is why Marcus Rios got in. He was initially planned to redshirt. Um, so, so watching him out there, he, he looked a little tense, a little, little tentative, right. but seeing him out there, I mean, it, it kind of solidifies that he's going to be the, the fourth, fifth corner in this team now that Ish is gone. Uh, and then Joseph Fourier uh, on Twitter, he, he kind of tweeted out that he had a bad game. I, th I thought he played a little rough. I mean, it, it, it's again what we're talking about, these growing pains with a new young offense and a new offense. Uh, uh, it's nice to have in a blowout win like this, but it, again, he's, he's the best tight end in the country. I mean, he's got to have better games than, than two catches, 27 yards, and a fumble. Right. And Torian White as well. He had four exactly. uh, calls on him that for, for holding, and they almost came on consecutive plays, <laughs> yeah. which I think really kind of deflated you know, the momentum they had going in. They really could have put up 40-plus points tonight. But some of these uh, penalties really stalled them, and I think uh, Torian White knows that, and it's not something that we've seen from him in the past. So I don't think this is too big an issue, but it is an issue nonetheless. And, and, and lastly, let's get the final takes here. Uh, this is kind of our special segment on the Beat Report. Uh, uh, your final take from Houston, 37-6. What would you get? Well, I thought it was interesting. Uh, Coach Morris said at the end at his post-game press conference that you know, they racked up almost 600 yards of total offense, but in spite of that, they still didn't feel like they played to their full potential. They still weren't satisfied. And the players themselves, you saw, they didn't celebrate like they did against Nebraska. Granted, 
Houston was not a nationally ranked team, but they didn't go out there and celebrate. They, you know, like they did last week. And I think they understand that even though they won, there was room for improvement. And I saw that in some of the tweets that some of the guys were sending out tonight: Joseph Foray, Simon Goins. They were they, they, the first thing they mentioned were that's room for improvement. We need to get better at what we're doing. It wasn't so much a celebration of the win; it was more about what they can do to get better for next week. My, my take is uh, is the recruiting aspect. I mean, obviously that's what I do at Rivals, but uh, they had two kids here. Um, specifically that, that they really like. Uh, Four-star corner, LJ Moore. Um, big, big, highly covered kid. And then uh, the commitments, uh, they had Jermaine Kelly and, and, and Kenneth Clark and Sean Dowling. I mean, just the recruiting aspect in general out here at the Rose Bowl, it's becoming a big, big tool um, for UCLA. I, I didn't see a lot of the guys that were expected to be here, a lot of the four and the five-star kids and the, and the high three-star kids that said they were going to come. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, having guys like Moore and your commitments and, and all those kids out here, it, it's becoming kind of an event. Every Saturday night, if I'm a recruit, I want to be out here and be with all the big recruits and stuff. So, uh, you know, UCLA is kind of not only moving up in the national rankings, but also moving up in kind of the, the I guess, sex appeal of, of, of a recruiting uh, program now. Right. And you can bet that next week you, they will come in droves. The 12:30 start. It's on ESPN. It's on ABC, nationally televised, against a team like Oregon State that just came off a huge win over Wisconsin. I think we'll see these guys come in next week. Like I said, in droves because it seems like, you know, when you're the only team now that's undefeated in LA, you're gonna start getting the attention, and you'll see that swing next week when uh, they play Oregon State. There you have it. For Miguel Melendez, you can keep reading all of his stuff at LA Daily News and InsideSoCal.com slash UCLA. You can follow him on Twitter at Melendez Sports. And you can continue to read all my stuff at BruinSportsReport.com and follow me at Edward Lewis BSR. Thanks for tuning in.